I work very much on the other end of things, so I'm not in the lab, but I'm out in the field and, um, and trying to evaluate um, what's happening um, for the children and adults and once uh, um, they're vaccinated. So for this talk, I'm looking at how to use nasopharyngeal carriage surveillance um, in children hospitalised with pneumonia to demonstrate direct and indirect effects of the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. So for pneumococcal disease, um, there's a high um, pneumococcal burden, um, so that is pneumonia, sepsis and meningitis in children globally, particularly in developing countries. So pneumonia is the number one reason why children die around the world, and about a third of those deaths are due to the bacteria, the, um, the pneumococcus. There's about 400 million cases per year, and more than 1.6 million deaths um, per year. And, it, and they comprise about 20% of all childhood deaths um, under five. So pneumonia kills more children than any other disease, and that includes um, AIDS, malaria, and measles combined. However, there's been a lack of attention to the disease, and it means that too few children have access to the currently available interventions. And so when the seven valent pneumococcal vaccine was introduced in the United States um, 15 years ago, um, there, well, there's more than 90 different serotypes of pneumococcus, but um, the first vaccine that was released um, contained seven of um, the 90-odd um, um, serotypes. And was that, when that was introduced in the US, um, it had a, oh, sorry, a dramatic um, effect. And so here, this is, Oh, sorry, I'm trying to use the pointer, which I think is that one, yeah. Okay, so PCV7 was introduced in the year 2000, and um, this is the rate of invasive pneumococcal disease um, in children over that, uh, over 10 year period. And for the seven types that were included in the vaccine, you can see a dramatic drop. Um, sorry, I can't quite seem to work the pointer out. Um, there was a dramatic drop, anyway, in the PCV7 types and uh, increase, a slight increase in the non-vaccine types due to replacement disease and particularly for 19A, which became more problematic in the, um, the older age groups. And so that vaccine was then replaced with the 13-valent vaccine, which covers um, another six of the prevalent um, serotypes. And so, in looking at all-cause pneumonia, this is data from the US in children under two years of age. There was a little decline following the introduction of the seven-valent vaccine. There was a decline of about 40% of all um, hospitalizations in children under two years of age. So very dramatic sort of effects. And so WHO then, in their revised position paper in, in um, 2012, um, recommended that PCV should be given a priority I mean, childhood immunisation programs worldwide, especially in countries where the under five mortality rate is more than 50 per thousand live births. Um, so the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines have been rolled out, and particularly with Gavi support, which subsidise um, the vaccines. It's when it first was released in the US, it was about $50 a dose. Um, Australia probably pays something like that. Um, that, that. UNICEF pays about $3.50 um, for a single dose, but with Gavi support, which is a par private public partnership, which is primarily funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, countries that are eligible, so low-income countries, um, pay about 10 to 30 per cents per dose. But as you can see here, all the dark um, grey countries are those that are using the vaccine, but the white areas are those that aren't using the vaccine, and you can see, um, particularly in Asia, there's very few countries in Asia that are using the, this vaccine, except for um, Nepal, Laos, um, Japan, and, and Korea, and um, Papua New Guinea, and a little bit in the private market in, in, um, in uh, the Philippines. And so in terms of evaluating the vaccine, um, of course you'd want to know um, what the impact on pneumonia is, because that's the most prevalent of the diseases. But pneumonia is extremely difficult outcome to measure. It's very non-specific and very uh, and a non-sensitive, depending on what case definition you use. But it's a very difficult endpoint to actually measure epidemiologically. So we're looking at using pneumococcal carriage as an outcome. And in the Gambia in Africa, which has a high mortality rate, high under five mortality rate, they found that after the introduction of the seven valent vaccine. For radiological pneumonia, so pneumonia that's proven on x-ray, 
In the two to 11 month old children, there's a decline in the incidence of radio in pneumonia in the children. Um, well, not so much with the PCV7, but once they added the PCV13, which covers more serotypes, there was a decline. And this also occurred in the older age groups. And up until 2012, it wasn't so much herd immunity in the two to five year olds, but with further data, we'll see whether there has been a herd immunity effect in that age group. So ideally, um, you know, you'd need long, many years of data to collect this, specifically designed studies which cost a lot of money and require a lot of training and monitoring to actually look, you know, millions of dollars essentially to have, um, to have a look at what the impact of pneumonia is. It requires a lot of work um, by a lot of people and a lot of preparation, a lot of pre-data. And most countries can't do that. And so just looking back at the organism itself, so it's a gram-positive bacteria, the polysaccharide capsule, um, which is um, the polysaccharide capsule is its virulence factor, it's the basis for its immunity, and it's highly variable. And there's, as I've mentioned, there's more than 90 different immunological, uh, immunologically distinct serotypes. And for children, um, more than half of children under three carry the um, pneumococcus in their nasopharynx. And that's the important reservoir from its spread and how it gets spread from person to person. And children in low-income countries carry pneumococci at an earlier age, higher numbers, greater range, and in multiple serotypes. And the risk factors for carrying pneumococci are those pretty much related to poverty. Um, also ethnicity, crowding, family size, smoking, exposure, and also recent antibiotic use. And most carriers, though, of course, are asymptomatic. So many of us, probably you know, somewhere between 10 to 20 percent of us as adults, as well in the audience, carry pneumococcus. But of course, we don't have any any symptoms. But it's a prerequisite for disease, and so you need to carry pneumococcus before you become diseased. So it can spread via the respiratory tract to cause primary infections, such as otitis media, sinusitis, and pneumonia, or it can spread via the bloodstream to cause more serious infections such as bacteremic pneumonia, meningitis and septic arthritis. And this is um, data from the US again that following the introduction of PCV13, so covering a vaccine that covers 13 of more than those 90 serotypes, you can see here that the vaccine covered more than 30,000 episodes of invasive disease and pre prevented um, 3,000 deaths um, in three years following the introduction of the vaccine. And so the top graph is, oh, sorry. Um, the top graph is the cases prevented um, and this is the deaths prevented. And the pink is the older children, so unvaccinated and adults. And the blue is the vaccinated children. So you can see that um, there's a large amount of herd immunity there. And in fact, the herd immunity effects are actually greater than those for the um, direct effects. And, it, and presumably, and it's thought to be because of the reduction in carriage in the vaccinated children, that then prevents the spread to the caregivers and adults and the grandparents that these children are then in contact with and then reduces the disease in that older age group. And in Kenya, when they introduced the 10-valent vaccine, so there's a different manufacturer that has there's two different vaccines available, there's the 10-valent and the 13-valent. So in Kenya, introduced the 10-valent vaccine, the um, carriage of PCV types in the vaccine declined by two-thirds in under five-year-olds and older people. So even though there isn't, or Kenya does have data, but you can surmise that, well, if you're not carrying the organism, then it's unlikely, extremely unlikely, you're then going to get the disease from it. And then in terms of the methods to detect carriage, um, uh, Catherine Satsky's group at MCRI and Kim Mulholland had a, had a grant from the Gates Foundation to field test um, and identify what the best method was to actually identify pneumococcus from carriage samples. And they found that the group from uh, the University of London, um, Jason Hines group, and um, using their microarray had the best sensitiv sensitivity and positive predictive value than the other um, methods that are currently available. And so we, we're using those methods, but we've got some funds now to have a look at the impact of PCV13 in, in Laos. Um, 
and um, working with the government there and, and um, to have a look because there isn't any impact evaluation at all um, from Asia. So it's likely, of course, to have an impact, but we don't know how much of an impact um, in, in Asian countries. So PCB was started in 2000 and end of 2013 with Gabby Alliance support. And in April of that same year, the Ministry of Health asked WHO for support for an evaluation. And that was to ensure sustainability because there wasn't any regional data apart from Australia and New Zealand um, data that was available. And that was, is highly likely to be very different from what would happen in, in Laos. And so the problem was, though, that there was no baseline data. So there was no years of collecting all this nice surveillance data that you could have a look at pneumonia rates or meningitis rates or sepsis rates before and after the introduction of the vaccine. And all the other problem also was the vaccine was um, about to be introduced. So what could you do in such a situation? And the WHO has guidelines, actually, about how to do PCV evaluations, but they don't um, they are inadequate for countries that are in this situation and most countries are in this situation. They haven't had a lot of prior planning and they don't have a lot of expertise and it takes quite a lot of money and time and resources to put in these surveillance um, um, tools. And so we designed um, a couple of studies. Um, these are two that I'm mentioning here in, with using carriage endpoints. So we're looking at the impact of transmission in healthy children by doing community carriage surveys both before and after the introduction of the vaccine, so in the vaccinated children who are one to two years of age, and also in the unvaccinated babies, so who are too young to be vaccinated. So the neonatal mortality rate in Laos is one of the highest in the regions, and so even though we can't determine how high invasive pneumococcal disease is in that age group, at least we'll be able to show that the um, carriage has declined in those babies. So if carriage has declined, presumably disease also would have declined. And then in addition, for the pneumonia well, um, cases, we will describe trends in nasopharyngeal carriage in hospitalised um, acute respiratory infection um, cases in under five-year-olds. And we will be able to then use that data then to work out what coverage you actually need in the community to show that decline in carriage. So the government then knows to what to aim for, what coverage how, what proportion of children in the community need to be vaccinated to, to um, get that decline in, in, covering, in carriage. And so this is just some uh, data from our first community carriage um, survey that we did before the introduction of the vaccine. So this data is from the babies. So we found that 14% of babies carried pneumococcus and, um, and about 6% of them were a vaccine type. And so, and, but it was much higher in the one to two year olds. Um, about 56% of the babies carried any pneumococcus and 32% of those one to two year olds um, carried um, a vaccine type. And for the government to see this information in a country that can't grow the organism, hasn't seen the organism, that was quite significant because the um, director of the immunisation service in the country said, was criticised for actually in implementing this vaccine because they didn't have actually any data. But to show that half of the children, healthy toddlers in the community are actually carrying the vaccine, uh, vac uh, carrying the organism, was uh, quite profound um, to, to actually show that um, information. And the looking at um, the density then of carriage rates, so this is just some of the um, further work that we're doing, is looking at the density um, by age groups. So even though um, children, the babies and the one to two year olds, the carriage rate is different, um, the, they, they have the same pneumococcal load. So the pneumococcus just seems to fill up um, the face, uh, the, the, the space, um, um, even though the rate of carriage is lower. And then we're also with the microarray, so combining the qPCR, um, the quantitative data, and also the microarray data, we'll be able to have serotype specific densities for each serotype. And the red here is the, um, whoops, the red here is the, um, the pneumo uh, PCV13 serotypes. This is the serotype specific density, and then this is the non PCV13 serotype. So we'll be able to compare that before and after the introduction of the vaccine. And this is a bit of a complicated slide, but this is sort of looking at what happens in the pneumonia cases over time. So um, children in one hospital were, as they came in and were admitted to hospital with an acute re respiratory infection, they had a nasopharyngeal swab taken. And so the blue line is showing the children, just the number of children that were enrolled over the 
15 months or so, the 18 months or so that we've started the study so far, and there's a bit of a, a rainy season peak here in, in terms of seasonality for acute respiratory infection. And then here is the, this line here is the total pneumococcal carriage of any serotype. And you can see, if you put in a trend line there, you can see that there's a suggestion that there's been a decline. Um, so PCV13 was introduced right here back in just, you know, uh, November 2013. And then this line here is looking at the vaccine serotypes. So the vaccine serotypes look to have declined, and this is the trend line. If you put in a trend line there, the vaccine serotypes have already declined. And so we're going to be monitoring that over three years to have a look to see how long it takes for those vaccine types to actually decline. And so this is what we hope to do um, over the three year period. Is so over the three year period, those vaccine types we, um, we anticipate will decline to a nadir here and where the vaccine is working at the maximum effect. And then at the same time, we're doing community carriage surveys so that we'll be able to work out okay, at what um, carriage do you need in the community to show what PCV coverage do you need in the community to show the maximum benefits of the vaccine. And we'll be able to determine that in both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated children and estimate how long it takes to achieve those maximum benefits of the vaccine. And so we think that there are feasible surveillance methods for low and middle income countries that aren't able to do um, these, uh, you know, looking at invasive disease and pneumonia surveillance over many years. And, and we're doing that in three sites to look at the feasibility and get that data. So in a couple of years time, we, we anticipate that for transmission in Laos, we'll be able to show that the vaccine types decline in vaccinated children and that the vaccine types in unvaccinated children will decline in, um, in neonates, the babies that are too young to be vaccinated. And as carriage then is a prerequisite for disease, then it's likely that disease has also declined in both age groups, even though they can't prove it, but it's, it's likely we make that assumption. And then for, ne for pneumonia, we will also similarly be able to show that the vaccine types decline in pneumonia cases, and this most likely indicates that pneumonia is not um, um, due to those vaccine types, and we'll also be able to estimate the PCV coverage that the government needs to um, aim for, for the children in the population to get the maximum benefits from the vaccine. So in summary, um, the value of doing carriage surveys or carriage, um, using carriage, nasopharyng nasopharyngeal carriage in PCV evaluations is that you are able to show the biological effect on, on vaccine types. You can show that the direct effects, the indirect effects, they're relatively easy to do compared to other methods. There, there's a, a way of monitoring the non-vaccine serotypes, although we're still working on that, what that means because carrying non usually the non-vaccine serotypes are less invasive and don't cause as much disease as the vaccine serotypes. And again, as I mentioned, we'll be able to estimate the coverage for the government to show what the maximum benefit of the vaccine. And then we aim to do some mathematical modelling with that carriage data and IPD data um, to, able, um, to have a look at the population effects as well. And this is um, uh, thank you to all the collaborators that are involved in this work and um, 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 over the over the um, in the region. So thank you very much. So a great study. Um, is it a concern that only thirty percent of the isolates were actually um, covered by the vaccine? And and what's your thought about that? And does this mean we need a region-specific vaccine made? Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's typical. So that's a typical carriage profile, I think, in most countries, and that's the case. For invasive disease, the the um, it's much higher, of course. So usually you get seventy to eighty percent of um, that are vaccine serotypes, and we do have actually some invasive disease from Laos, some isolates, and it is about seventy over seventy percent of the invasive isolates. So for the carriage isolates, that's sort of typical. Yeah. So other questions?